everyone. Uh, the mini digger's gone. It's Thursday morning, so we're back home with the chicken house. Do you see? Okay, so the next day now we got Ewan back from Frankie on the road, Hello. and this is the, the lintel that we poured last night. It's now hard, and to strip it, literally, all we do. Cut the wires. And then we should have a lintel. So there the object of when we're doing all the tapping to get the air bubbles out, as you can see. It's pretty good, and we can build straight on top of that now. This is the big piece of steel running through the centre. Yeah, so sorry about the lintel. Um, I spent ages doing a description on how you build a lintel, went into great detail about how I done it and putting the steel through the middle and everything else. And for some reason, the whole lot was lost. I have no idea where it's gone. Um, so sorry, but I will be doing a lintel in the future. So then I'll show you how it's how I built a lintel. But here we go. Here's me and Ewan finishing off the rest of the uh, chicken house. Uh, basically, I'm on a step ladder, and it's much easier if Ewan can pass me the blocks and the muck, etc. And then very shortly, um, I start to teach Ewan how to lay blocks. Ewan and I seem to work well together and I do believe it's because we're both Celts and not English. So um, Ewan being Welsh, me being Cornish, uh, we just seem to gel. So here goes Ewan's first lesson in laying blocks, just a quick demo by me and then uh, let him crack on and get on with it. I've always found um, if, whenever you're teaching, you know, I've been teaching for uh, decades now, but um, just let them get on with it, do the best they can and just show them where they're going right, where they're going wrong, a little bit of guidance here and there because you can, it's so much easier to learn just by doing it for yourself.
I suppose in the process of building this little house for the chickens, we're also <laughs> socialising the new chicks because they're running around underneath our feet and uh, getting quite used to human interaction, which is also a pretty good thing. Bit of a joint effort here just to speed things along. Um, yeah, doing good and, and you know, cracking on with the job. So there we have it, blockwork finished thanks to Ewan's help and um, we've cut the top edges uh, ready for the roof which we'll be doing tomorrow if the steel arrives. Morning everyone, Saturday morning, the steel's arrived. It arrived at about 5.30 last night. So, got some tiles here, just gonna show you how you need to set out your spacings for your um, supports for the tiles. So, as you can see, if you turn these tiles over, they have two little lugs on the top, which sits on anything, uh, usually a baton or something that supports it. Here, lug here, and here. And they also, this is from underneath, so these are upside down, they also overlap. And where they overlap, the other tile sits on as well, yeah? So if you turn it all upside down now, so this one, this one, see how they're made so they sit in this groove here. And then the next one, sits on top of that. These two sections of each tile fit inside the, the other one, which makes it all waterproof. But we need to measure the distance. Take this one off between 
these lugs here and the next lugs on the next tile. So as you can see on these particular tiles you'll have a batten sat here, a batten sat here. So we need to measure the distance between the top of those battens which will be about 380 mil, 15 inches. So every batten we put on the roof has to be 15 inches apart. So we're going to cut the bands on the steel delivery with this little baby and then cut the main support steel to 2.4 meters which is nearly 8 foot. After cutting all the steel, uh, the two leftover pieces from the main support beams welded uh, together, put together there 2.4 which gives me another length. So I'm just going to do a little weld in the middle to, to join them. Those of you who know about this sort of thing, uh, that was obviously way too hot, too high in amperage and uh, I burnt a hole as you could hear, uh, now trying to rectify <laughs> that problem. So I'm filling in the hole that I made earlier because I had too high an amperage um, and it's all looking good. Notice how green everything is starting to get. Um, we want the reason I've been welding outside this time of year. Uh, there's no risk of fire because I wouldn't even dream of doing this in the summer because um, everything is so dry and crispy. And there we have it. So as you can see, I've just spot welded on these. I had some leftover stainless steel uh, wall ties, they are, um, from work back in the UK. Uh, so I've just spot welded them to our roof timbers. At, at hopefully the correct distance each end. I'll show you why. So uh, here they are, the steels in place, and you can see the brackets are welded on. I can now screw through here, 
fix the roof steels to the wall yeah just a little bit of adjustment needed and there we have it so that's the reason why I welded the brackets on I can fix the rafters to the inside I'm now screwing the buttons to the steel rafters with uh, little screws that have a drill bit on the end. I can't remember the name of them, but um, they're really handy. Everything's uh, galvanized steel and uh, 15 inch centers for the tiles. Really easy job. For these screws, Designed for screwing into metal, they have a drill bit end. You don't need to pre drill any holes, you just drill the, just drill the screw in. Thank you. So there we have it. The roof's on, uh, the metal's on now. All we have to do is finish the tiling. The tiles I'm putting on here were the original tiles of the house when we bought it. Uh, and we, we have plans to reuse all of them. Uh, here for this chicken house we have in the future a little post preview for you we're building a quail house because we intend to keep quite a lot of quail uh, that will all be tiled with the same tiles and then when I do uh, some continue the walls for the well uh, they will also be tiled with the same thing so everything has a similar look um, and, and you know a traditional look as well That's the roof for the chicken house finished. Now we need to put something on the outside. And I've actually decided we're going to render the inside as well. Just to make it easier to clean. everyone guess what the first lighting of the sauna I've just fitted the chimney and I thought yeah let's have a sauna or sauna if you wanted to be authentic hi right, guys I've just taken this the only way I have a measuring at the moment out of the sauna it's obviously a lot cooler right here and rapidly falling but 
here it goes, first testing of the sauna. It's 75 degrees at the minute. Um, I usually do half an hour. We'll see how it goes. I have a few of these as well. Which are great, so I'll be putting them on the uh, on the stones. Well, that was literally like 10 minutes and it's hot. Really hot. Hot, hot. So, out for a quick shower outside and uh, back in again for another 10 minutes or so. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, nearly 75 degrees constant. I've never built a wood-fired sauna before, but that's just awesome. And it used very, very little wood. I'll show you. So it's been lit for about three quarters of an hour, maybe an hour. I've been in there half an hour. That's what's remaining of that amount of wood that I put in there. Maybe a little bit more. Really, really good. And there's some rocks, sauna rocks that were a gift from uh, Maria and Case, our friends down the road. So thanks for that, guys. I can only say first sauna was awesome. We found this massive scorpion today. <laughs> Dinky. So, I, uh, I've just driven down the road 20 minutes to a friend's place. I'll show you where we are. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Very good, thank you. How's things going? Yeah, good. We're halfway through Frankie. the roof off. Are you? Yes. Cool. Right, look. I have here. Oh. A van full of tools. Oh. Let's do it. That's exciting. So that's the old roof stripped. And then these are the new panels that are going on. Uh Four inch, hundred mil, forty mil, inch and a half ish. Basically, they're really sort of self-supporting, but I'll put a metal beam at the top here, and then you got the two concrete beams, one at the bottom, one in the middle. And we still have grey skies. So that's four new panels on. Took nearly ten minutes. Now the lot of Titivation to get it flat and level. Yeah, problem. <laughs> there's probably nothing there, so I might have to move in a bit on that one. Or out. Hang on. Yeah. Ready to put it in more than that? There you go. And now just tap it in. Perfect. Built this whole roof. Yeah, look at you. Go, girl, go. There we go. Roof on. Ish. Doesn't quite fit the building. But we'll get over those issues. And from the inside. Nice, clean, white and insulated, which is great. And we think maybe... Nice little skylight for the kitchen. Possibly. Now I've got to pick up all my mess.
So here we are. Oh yeah, cool. Is that it's here we are. Uh, put a laser level through the whole house, or the whole kitchen. Uh, you and Carissa are putting the pencil lines on the wall. Um, this gives them a meter line all around the room, a meter above finished floor level. So you can take all your references from that level. And that's such a cool shot. Good morning. Uh, today we're off hunting for firewood. We've got the tractor all prepared, six crates on the front, full of diesel, and a couple of chainsaws in the back. So off we go. Driving straight into the sun, probably not the best photographic image you could ever get, but uh, hey ho. So here we are, down the bottom of the track. Didn't really deem it necessary to go much further because uh, it gets really steep over there. So we're gonna cut up a bit of this firewood lying around. So I have lots of experience using a chainsaw. Um, I find cutting logs uh, or you know branches on a heap much easier. You don't have to use a saw or horse or anything like that. But it requires a lot of experience, and I wouldn't you know suggest anyone try this at home. It's actually quite dangerous, but um, it suits what I was doing at the time. All the wood uh, I'm collecting now, whereas I may have said previously, cut down by the, the electric company and stacked up or just left to lie there. Uh, this was cut not this March, but last. Mr. 
quick something I'd like to share uh, about cutting wood here in Portugal at, at, at anyway. There's um, the insect life is avid here. There are insects that eat everything possible. And when you cut timber in Portugal, central Portugal anyway, as far as I know, so as I've been told by a local expert, um, you should always cut it December, January, yeah? Because it's when the sap is at its lowest and you need, you need to make sure there's no sap left in the wood. This ash was cut by the electric company just before the leaves came, so it was sort of, um, I think, maybe March, just about March time. And if you look underneath the bark, you can't see it here, but when I turn it over, see how much dust is on the lower log. And look at the holes where the dust has come from. So this log, which has only been cut, you know, over a year, is, um, is full of worms. And they will just, if you put that, you know, in your indoors in your house, you're taking all those worms in your house and uh, you never know. So it's always best to stack your wood outside the house and just take in what you need and use it. Because you don't want these little buggers in your house eating everything. So there we are. Oh shit. So there we are. The back of the, the back box fully loaded with ash. And the front crates fully loaded with orange. And then the chores and everything because I've just had a call on this. We always take this with us when we're going away from the house. Just a um, two-way radio. Walkie talkie thing. And she just phoned me, or called me, and reminded me we need to go to the hospital this afternoon to get the results of our MRI scans. So I'll go and do that. Just driving past a few of our orange trees. Um, yeah, we have about 75 of them. And later on, uh, some Gia which is 
the persimmons. Um, we have four or five quite large persimmons. Um, this year we've been a bit too late to do anything about them. Next year we're probably going to make a lot of persimmon beer, which is a new thing I've just discovered. had the results of the MRI scans and the fracture in my spine was probably from uh, an injury I received in a martial arts competition, taekwondo competition, um, over 25 years ago they say, so uh, basically now I've just got a bit of osteoarthritis which apparently is expected of someone of my age. <laughs> and, and you? Uh, the MRI confirmed I have no cartilage on my right hip, um, but it also showed that I have highly inflamed so I've now on anti-inflammatories and in a couple of weeks time I shall have a cortisone injection so here it goes so that's it um, thanks for watching guys thanks for liking subscribing all that stuff and uh, we'll see you next week bye, bye.